Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Wen Peng Wang, and I am a PhD candidate from the University of Virginia. Today, I will be presenting the work from our group, uh, Low Power But High Energy, The Looming Cost of Billions of Smart Devices. Uh, yeah, so the Internet of Things um, has become ubiquitous nowadays, and thanks to the decades of research in uh, low power wireless systems, the low power features has brought a lot of hope in using the IoT systems to reduce the energy consumption and making smart homes green. Um, one question really arises is, does IoT really help solve our energy consumption problem or does it even make it worse? So the IoT uh, revolution has reversed the continuously improving power trend for certain appliances by making them smart. For example, uh, traditional light bulbs are physically disconnected when they turn off whereas the smart bulbs constantly draw a trickle of energy to remain networked, uh, whether they use or not. Similarly, the energy star requirements uh, and the technology advances dramatically lower the power draw of televisions, but adding connectivity and additional features has increased their standby consumption. Uh, introducing always on voice assistant is another new source of uh, continuous uh, energy consumption in IoT enabled world. So, the decades of research in this low power wireless embedded systems continues to lower power requirements, making device uh, low power enough to operate on scavenged energy. The underlying motivating intellect, uh, intellectual challenge is, has been how to make increasingly interesting and useful computer operating uh, with increasingly less energy. When the energy is not constrained, however, even for internet of things and other embedded devices, the research questions shifted as uh, managing limited energy is no longer the pressing concern. So mains power devices do not have to fret over the very last jewel. Uh, instead, they rely on sta uh, stable power from the grid. And uh, as even carelessly implemented mains uh, power devices still likely only draw a handful of watts. Individually, they pale in comparison to the energy consumption of other common loads. Uh, this has kept the wall power IoT devices under the radar from an energy consumption perspective. Um, although the market has also choose a side, with the more IoT devices are designed by various manufacturers with more functions, fancy appearance, and cheaper price, and the popularization is making the Internet of Things a common knowledge for general consumers. The Internet of Things is a plural; it has been there for the reason, and the key value. Uh, proposition has always been its proportional scale. This is unfortunate implications for sustainability. While an individual mains power devices may consume a relatively insignificant handful of kilowatt of electricity per year, at national or global scale, the consumption adds up. So consider a popular commercially available air quality sensor that draws only 1.76 watts in normal operation. As the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted, Monitoring indoor air quality is a pressing need, but deploying just one of these sensors per building in the US, 5.6 million commercial buildings would add uh, 237 uh, megawatt hour of energy consumption per day. And annually, this is more energy consumption than some small um, countries. And in this talk, we propose new frontiers to make the IoT net zero or even better. We analyze uh, challenges and opportunities for the mains power IoT devices. And based on findings, we propose new research areas for mains power IoT. And we also explore beyond um, device level energy efficiency and propose our findings for system level opportunities. <laughs> so here we identify several challenges that leads to the growing energy consumption on mains power IoT devices. Um, developing robust systems with energy constraints remains challenging. And simultaneously ensuring that a device is correctly energy optimized adds additional complexity. So when energy is not cons uh, constrained, the development cost to use energy frugally is typically too high. And similarly, low power wireless protocols have not kept pace with the Wi-Fi's ubiquity and ease of use for both developers and users. So this, this makes Wi-Fi a setting point for some of the IoT devices. And these low power alternatives, such as you know, Wi-Fi, uh, such as uh, BLE or ThinkB, uh, are typically siloed and do not provide the same general purpose connectivity that Wi-Fi does. 
uh, also the ecosystem redundancy also contributes to the added energy consumption. Most IoT devices are designed to work as a single device or in a collaboration with many other devices. When uh, in a network, these devices are often individually over provisioned and this incurs a large energy cost as the compute energy cost generally positively correlates with uh, increased compute capability. So the same issue occurs with wireless radios um, as all the devices are capable of communicating with the central network, even they could coordinate locally to save energy and have a single device connect to the main network. The operation of IoT devices are also often uh, designed to be fixed function and fixed purpose. Their capability remains generally fixed during their entire lifespan. And adding additional features would require adding extra devices, which also result in extra energy costs. So besides the device themselves, in general IoT devices also do not have the specific regulations in energy as larger uh, electronic appliances such as television or, uh, or refrigerators. So further, as the impact of IoT devices on single consumers' overall energy consumption is relatively minimal, consumers have little incentives to consider energy when purchasing IoT devices. And this void generates little pressure on manufacturers to consider and prioritize energy efficiency. The development of new software and hardware also provides us new opportunities to address these challenges. So new techniques that distill uh, contextual information about the device operating environment can inform how the device should operate to increase efficiency. For example, um, a smart voice assistant will never be activated when no one is present, despite its potential for improvement, acquiring the context uh, remains challenging. And many operating systems and software libraries for embedded systems uh, right now have sacrificed flexibility in exchange for resource optimization and uh, small memory or code footprint. Uh, the new operating system design, such as the FreeRTOS or Talk OS, has provided more capable multi-programming capabilities. And this opens up the possibility for more flexible device going forward, uh, which can be customized and reprogrammed after deployment. So although the uh, on-device foundations are beginning to emerge, the broader ecosystem for usable reprogramming and customizations is still lacking. We can also leverage the hardware redundancy uh, with the opportunities for resource sharing and spe uh, specialization. So that is uh, future devices may not need to be self-sufficient and instead expect to operate collaboratively within the network and only include the hardware uniquely necessary for its overall goal. Uh, leveraging existing computer resources leads to a more efficient use of the resources overall, and a more locally centralized architecture is also easier to operate, where replacing a single device with newer hardware can benefit many nearby devices. Um, ensuring the Internet of Things itself is sustainable prompt several new research opportunities and underlying research questions. So the mains power devices enjoy reliable and essentially unlimited power, which simplifies many embedded systems and networking challenges. However, requiring a physical connection to the power stands uh, a major deployment impedent. Opposite on the energy spectrum are small energy harvesting devices, which are tasked with operating on intermittent and unpredictable energy they can uh, scavenge nearby. Uh, being self-powered increases deployment and flexibility, but also complicates device software and operation. The unpredictable nature of harvesting energy is a constant concern. Um, is it possible to merge these two extremes to achieve a more reliable and ultra low power operation? So uh, this would require leveraging the stable mains power and the intermittent functions from energy harvesting domains reduce the overall energy consumption. So the problem now becomes how do we extract the trickle power and design software for predictable intermediacy? Um, it is also hard to benchmark what an expected or typical level of power bill is given in type of uh, given the type of IoT devices. So non-intrusive load monitoring is one technique for disaggregating electricity consumption to a single device 
may permit analyzing the device operation of the device using just measurements of its total power draw and without the ability to modify or inspect the device code. So this breakdown can provide uh, understandings on how the device is using the energy for different operations. Um, effectively disaggregate, disaggregate the device operation, making it more feasible to compare various device and define the standard uh, consumption profiles. So this transparency can also lead to more um, competitions and provide the basis for fair regulation. The IoT devices are often designed to operate both individually and as part of a collective network. Um, this flexibility we know is leading to the unnecessary redundancy. And from the energy perspective, the marginal cost of running additional uh, instruction is fairly low, whereas the cost of running an entirely new microcontroller and all the supporting circuitry is even higher. And uh, thus, sharing the compute resources that already powered rather than requiring uh, each IoT devices to be self-sufficient could lead to overall energy savings. However, to enable this, we need to first figure out what uh, network and system level architectures are needed to enable device to device compute cooperations and how can IoT software be designed to scale with available nearby computing without the need to over provision the IoT devices CPU. And one key application level goal for the Internet of Things is to improve sustainability and reduce energy use. And at an individual uh, device level, this is likely not possible, however, but as a whole network, the data generated from each device or the actuation from, uh, I'm sorry? Okay, uh, I'll just I'll just keep going forward. Uh, however, from a network perspective, the, the data generated from each device or the actuation capability of each device provides another resource uh, for the network to optimize the house, building, factory, or environment where the devices are deployed. So this may require new abstractions and API design, where uh, perhaps energy credits are required for a device to join and participate. And to make it even possible, uh, two research questions will occur is the first one, how can a network of IoT devices ensure they generate uh, energy savings greater than their cumulative energy consumption? And second, what new software abstractions are needed to enable heterogeneous uh, device to collaborate towards overall energy redu uh, reduction? So we primarily focus on the energy challenge of devices themselves in the context of a specific deployment However, the Internet of Things is more broadly includes large scale data collection and processing. And from a device design perspective, the energy costs of transmitting, collecting, storing, and processing data are ignored. However, there's a real energy cost in terms of the network and routers used to transport data and the data centers where data are stored and processed. These costs are nearly entirely hidden from developers and users. So from an energy consumption perspective, new tools, uh, are needed to be able to consider these costs both when designing a new system or at the runtime. Uh, at runtime, devices could make a decision based on the energy cost and expected utility for using the network or the cloud. At design time, uh, developers could compare different architectures, not just in terms of performance or privacy, but also in terms of energy. Um, so left unchecked, the convenience of implementing IoT uh, devices with main powers can lead to a new energy disaster where IoT devices are significantly consumer uh, energy on a national scale. While rigid uh, energy con constraints have so far driven research in low power con computing, an opportunity and need is arising to uh, not ignore the main power devices. We identify a range of uh, potential opportunities for new research focused on increasing the utility of IoT devices while simultaneously reducing their own energy footprint. And this is critical to prevent the uh, Internet of Things from becoming its own sustainability problem, which is ironically countering one of its uh, own purporting benefits. Uh, so this is uh, all for my uh, talk and thank you very much. Okay, um, thanks very much. Uh, questions for the speaker? Yeah, 
Uh, hi, yeah, thank you for the talk. So uh, you mentioned in one slide that most of the IoT devices are still using Wi-Fi and not using like uh, low power networks like BLE. So do you have an estimate how much lower power is BLE as compared to Wi-Fi, like just like a ballpark estimate? Uh, we have a rough estimate on, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. okay. Yeah, we have a rough estimate on the uh, Wi-Fi chips compared to the BOE chips. And for chips like BOE, they normally save uh, almost like an order of magnitude less than the uh, Wi-Fi. But, but you know, what, what, one problem with BLE is, you know, it does not have the, the ease of use and all the infrastructures like Wi-Fi. So um, whenever you're designing a new system, you have to also uh, designing a new hub, which will be paired with your devices, be able to uh, make them connected to the internet. Hey, Wenpeng, uh, Simon Peter, University of Washington. Um, I hear that one particularly bad problem for wall-powered IoT devices is the AC-DC transformer that has to sit in each one of them that has a really bad PoE. Uh, it wastes a lot of power. I was wondering if that is included in your, in your numbers and um, further out, I was wondering if um, perhaps uh, there's an opportunity for an ultralight IoT where we use just kind of power harvesting devices and uh, at the edge, these IoT devices, um, and push everything else into the core cloud where we have a much better PoE than, than we do at the IoT edge. And I was wondering what your thoughts are about that. Yeah, uh, I think you, you made a very, very interesting point. And uh, that's one of the uh, visions we have for future IoT devices. And uh, you know, one, uh, I think one direction uh, we mentioned in this paper is maybe we can try to leverage the uh, energy harvesting uh, functions or other techniques and try to combine them with, you know, maybe little but uh, stable uh, harvested energy. And so that can be used uh, to serve for these uh, little uh, small sensors or other um, IoT devices to perform their functions and so offloading all the compute uh, as you know also what you said to the to eat to eat to either the, the local edge gateways or to the cloud so uh, this could potentially uh, you know uh, be more energy efficient than just running all the you know uh, data collections and uh, processing on the edge Okay, are there questions from the Zoom audience? No? Uh, also, I should open up any questions for any of the speakers. 